There have been some great games born from tech demos. Usually, they still have that feel about them, more about flash than substance, like the game experience was just tacked on to satisfy an expectation while you enjoy the graphical prowess of this shiny new box. Goat Simulator, though, operates kinda differently. Built originally as an absurd joke by Coffee Stain Studios, this video of a goat running around, breaking things, and generally causing havoc inside a glitchy as all hell physics engine was hilarious in its strangeness and immediately had folks clamoring to play the real game. But there was no real game to Goat Simulator, so being the enterprising sort and noticing the line of folks with money in their hands and demand in their hearts, Coffee Stain tacked on some vaguely game-like mechanics and boom, Goat Simulator was born. Goat help us all. So, you're a goat. You have no backstory and other does anything else in this town. You see, that'd make you care about these things, and that's not what Goat Simulator's all about. Goat Simulator is about breaking things and being a goat. You can lick things, you can beat up things by headbutting them, and you can occasionally use bits of the scenery to jump on or get ahead. That's about it. Entire appeal is in making a mess of things, exploring, and racking up score multipliers by breaking things in new and interesting ways. And you know, watching the hilariously broken physics cause all sorts of issues. The dude's leg jutting out of the wall of a convenience store to just this, the hell that is climbing up a ladder. Because let's face it, if goats ever learned how to navigate ladders, there'd be none of us left. There isn't much of a goal in Goat Simulator either, except for the few achievements you're offered as a basic way of directing the lack of plot. Mostly it's a toy, a chance to unwind and to have fun with a game that absolutely refuses to either take itself seriously or patch any of the 11 bajillion bugs you're going to come across. Really, making sense of the whole thing is a greater challenge than anything you're going to find on these city streets. That's certainly not going to stop you from looking, is it? I didn't think so. This is about as freeform as gaming gets. Absolute liberation from the need to do anything. And it's all because of a deranged goat. If you really need a goal though, you've got a time trial mode where you're tasked with racking up the highest score in a minute. Bleating optional. Goat Simulator doesn't pay all that much attention to its graphics or sound because, well, it just doesn't. Hell, it'd probably be more jarring to see a game this mechanically broken with excellent graphics and sound because then it'd be a disappointment. Instead, you get a weird, blippy, repetitive audio track, passable if lackluster models and textures, and a button to bleat on command. And honestly, that's all you need. The controls will take some getting used to, but soon you'll be tearing through the streets and getting mauled by oncoming traffic in no time. And if you do suffer the fate worse than death, viz being stuck in the geometry and unable to get out, all you gotta do is hit respawn and bam, you're back out on the streets, terrorizing passersby. It looks like the stupidest game of the year, and frankly, it is the stupidest game of the year. That's exactly what Goat Simulator was going for, and so by their twisted definition, it does absolutely everything it was set out to do. Don't act like you're not loving every second of it either. 